Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Today's a special episode of uh, the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have as our guest my good friend Pat Gervais. He's one of the leaders of the of Bear's Man Cave in the School of Manliness, and he's also a radio type guy. He's used to have a a blues type of FM radio show, and uh, so we're going to turn the tide a little bit. He's going to talk story with me a little bit about the new book uh, that Sophie is publishing for me: Twelve Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? So we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My co-adventure guy today is Pat Gervais. He is the voice that you hear uh, uh, in the in the promos and stuff for the for our radio show, the Bear Wozniak Adventure. He's a a very good friend of mine. Pat helped me out. You know, you really know who a real friend is because in my life as a surfer and and doing all this media stuff, some people come alongside you and you don't know if they're being your friend or if they just want to. Um, I don't. Know, I don't want to be real negative about it, but people can can use you or 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 whatever. But this man, Pat Gervais, when I was going through prostate cancer, he stepped up. He had just moved down to Florida, where I where my wife and I were at the time before we came back to Hawaii, and he just put up with the worst stuff from me when I was. He had. I mean, he would pick me up to to take me places, and uh, sometimes that made, meant making a lot of pit stops because of the results of the radiation. And in so many other ways, when it was time to build the the, the website, Bear School of Manliness, the, the, the three-year curriculum on manliness that men, we as the men cave go through together, <clears throat> and also fathers take their sons through, Pat just, he's the, he's the genius behind it. And so I'm really glad to welcome, I can say uh, with all honesty, my real good friend, Pat Gervais. Hey, Pat, how's it, brother? Hey, brother, it's doing well, doing well. I don't know if you would say genius as far as, you know, from my perspective, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm like a good old-fashioned mule out on the farm. <laughs> you, put, you put me in the traces, I might not be too smart, but I'm going to pull that plow. You know, you're not that very smart, but at least you're not good-looking, you know? I've been told many times I have the perfect face for radio. Yeah, that's right, exactly. But you know, you know, Pat's also a member of Knights on Bikes and does a lot of charity type stuff with his motorcycle. How many different motorcycles have you had in your life? Do you think? Uh, different motorcycles. One, two, three, four. I've only had five bikes. I, uh, I'm kind of a, a lightweight when it comes to uh, changing motorcycles. I get one and I just stay with it. But don't you feel like? Um, when, like when I'll ask you questions about your life, you go, well, let me see. That's when I was riding the, uh, the uh, Heritage, the, you know, whatever. You kind, of, you kind of remember your life based on what motorcycle you were riding at the time, right? Yep. yep. So, Pat, um, we had a little get-together. Uh, we do once a, once a year. We have the Man Cave Meetup, and we just had a Man Cave Meetup in May in, uh, down by Melbourne Beach, Florida. You want to talk a story about that for a moment? Oh, man, what a weekend. Uh, I only live about what, an hour, an hour and a half away from there. I was actually planning on just driving back and forth. And one of the other members of the man cave said, well, yeah, I'm getting a two room, uh, a two bed uh, room. Just, you know, here, split the cost with me and you can stay there. So I ended up staying there. Best decision I ever made. It was great being, getting there, get up in the morning, go down, you're having breakfast with the man, uh, talking story, and then just focusing on what God is doing is doing and can do in our lives uh, a couple of the men brought their sons with them more than two probably i think there were four sons or five sons it was it was really cool to see it, the men it, who it brought their sons. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't remember you know, i'm an old man i've slept since then yeah <laughs> well you but, look like uh, well, you look like that what was that guy that slept forever rep Rumple stilt skin or something. I don't forget. <laughs> starting to look. We're no, both starting to look more one. and more like. No, but but it was really cool because we get up early. Well, Friday we got together, down on the beach with our chairs. We had cigars, a little bit of whiskey, and we just talked story. And it was so cool to have the young men there with their dads because, and they got to see 
Well, maybe Dad's not the only guy that talks story about Jesus like this, and and they got to see real men um, together who really have a real gritty and real relationship with the Lord, talking story. Yeah, and in, in, in addition to uh, showing them that you know we are godly men and the like, we also uh, and I'm not I don't remember exactly which virtue it is that uh, it lines up. But uh, like you said, we're having cigars. We're having, you know, we had adult beverages, but we did them all in moderation. Right, right. And, uh, you know, I think that was one of the things that hopefully will go, you know, will register a lot, especially with the older boys as they're getting ready to uh, be involved with the fumes, as we used to say in, uh, you know, when I was involved in scouting, you know, perfume, Mm -hmm. exhaust fumes, that type of thing and alcohol fumes that it is possible to have a good time enjoy alcohol but not enjoy it to you know consume it to excess so you know we also were providing a good uh example for them there also and i, and I like we we, we kind of had you know people want to call it a retreat but really what we did is we did it the way jesus did it he sat around with his disciples probably a lot around campfires uh, you know, and talk story. And, and through that conversation, great teaching came forth. I gave a little bit of talk, you know, here and there, and I had key points I wanted to make, but all the men had this contr- contribution, so it was just great. And so, you know, but but let, let's, let, so so we would invite people to go to deepadventure.com, join the man cave slash school of manliness if you're men, and participate with us. We, we, you and I have to schedule a Zoom call in the next few days to get all the we get all the men together in the man cave once a month for a video Zoom call, and then we kind of we all kind of go through the same curriculum at, together of the 36 months of uh, of the man cave uh, school of manliness, and the fathers then lead their sons. I mean, that was the thing that was the coolest was 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 just that the fathers, and you know we learned something from the sons too. Yes. So it was, it was yeah, very we rich. Really did. I mean, yeah, they. They didn't just sit there and uh, listen quietly. They did engage with us, and it was phenomenal. And, you know, also we would invite women, the mama bears out there, go to the website, deepadventure.com. You have access to the first year uh, curriculum, which is all in the virtues, but you can actually get a family membership, especially if you're a single mom, and you can give your, your, your son who's, say, confirmation age or older access, not to the man cave, that's just for adult men, but to the School of Manliness, the same curriculum. And you can watch them go through it to make sure they're watching the video lessons, listening to the audio lessons, taking the self-assessments, reading the, the great content that we have there. So, But, you know, that, that, uh, that curriculum is somewhat based on my new book. We want to talk about th- this new book, 12 Rules for Manliness. Yeah, I, actually, I'm excited. I've gotten a uh, an early copy that I've able, been able to kind of skim through a little bit. I haven't sat down and read it from cover to cover yet, but it's uh, it looks really exciting. Definitely has a uh, a Western theme to it. Yeah, you yeah. know, which and it starts off right at the front, uh, right at the beginning. You're right in the title: Twelve Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? And I think in today's you know, in this era we're living in right now, even the media is helping to uh, to fuel that whole cowboy mentality with shows like 1883, 1923, and Yellowstone. Well, 1923, I wouldn't recommend to anybody, but the other two, we Cindy and I power watched. You know, it's really. No, I haven't made it through 1923 yet. So. Yeah, well, that 1923 is is the best one, but but yeah, the the cowboy mystique is real because cowboys live by a creed and they live by a and they live by a code, and uh, so it never gets old. And uh, and <clears throat> you know, I wasn't there's a there's a, a, a men's conference coming up, and their uh, their the title of their men's conference is Catholic masculinity. And I cringe when I hear that because I want them to change the name. I no longer talk about being masculine. It's such a woke type word almost. I just talk about manliness. And I think the title, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Right there, it provokes a positive and also a negative, or at least a, 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 a or maybe even just someone who's curious why in the world are they talking about manliness? You know, it's the, you know, and you and I both agree that men need to not apologize for being men. Right. Uh, you know, I, I've heard it said many times that, uh, you know, a, oh, I, I wish I could, you know, talk about it, but, you know, we're, 
we're meant to be dangerous. Yeah, we're, there's a chapter on that in the book. Well, we're talking with Pat Gervais. He's, he's a true friend, a true, true, true friend of mine. He's helped me in, it's a step forward in so many ways. And uh, he's the kind of guy that you know if you needed to call someone at 3 in the morning, you'd call Pat Gervais. And he's, uh, he's on the leadership team for the Bears School of Manliness and uh, Bears Man Cave. And we'll be right back. We're going to talk more about my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bears Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I am your host, Bear Wozniak. We have with us today my good friend, Pat Gervais. We're talking about my new book uh, that's just coming out by Sophia, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And we would encourage you, know, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you can pre-order it. You can order it, and we'll send you out an autographed copy. Or you can go to so Sophia a Publishing, our, our wonderful publisher that publish all of my books. Uh, but but also, I encourage people to go to Amazon because if you go to Amazon and you buy the book uh, and then you get uh, a chance to review it, um, it really helps elevate our visibility at Amazon. When they see a book that's, that a lot of people are selling and getting five-star ratings, it, it gets them to promote it too. So, But at any rate, consider uh, going to uh, Sophia or our website, deepadventure.com or, or Amazon, or it's going to be in all the Barnes & Noble's books and uh, books a million or something like that uh, different bookstores all the Christian and Catholic bookstores are going to have it too but um, 12 rules for man on this where have all the cowboys gone Pat Gervais uh, is definitely a cowboy uh, if you could see the video version of this I don't know man you look like a cross between uh, I don't know that long beard and you look in the Aloha shirt you look like the guy you look like uh, I would say the cook on wagon train cookie they used to call him and uh and uh i don't know um hawaii 5 -0. <laughs> <laughs> but see i kind of figure the way i look right now it's grizzly adams on vacation that's what you TV. that's who you look like you look like grizzly adams well so we're talking story about the book you've gotten a chance to read it a little bit did you like that one page on i think one of the chapters was fitness to witness did you see i wrote about you there uh, yeah i did notice notice that and uh, my lawyers will be in touch with you I mean, some of the things you said in there were rather slanderous 
And uh, that was kind of defamation of character. You're implying I'm and all, and I wasn't implying anything. I was flat out telling the truth, dude. What, 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 talk, talk, talk story a little bit about what that was all about. So, uh, what happened is, uh, as usually happens when I get around friends, we're sitting around, we're having a whiskey, having a cigar, and the subject gets around to something, and you go, hey, yo, I'll bet I can. So it became, it started off as hold my beer. <laughs> a friend, hold my beer and watch this. I bet I can lose more weight than you can. And Bear went, fine, challenge accepted. And we decided that what we'll do is we'd weigh in you know, every week. And I think we chose first thing Monday morning for uh, a weigh in. And whoever lost the least amount of weight during the week had to record a video of them singing a song in public. Highly motivational. This is all part of the chapter Fitness fitness to Witness. It's uh, men who... Um are members of the man cave. It is it, that that lean and mean way of the cowboy, you know. And most every man that joins the man cave, all of a sudden, they, we we challenge him to get fit because if you're not fit, how can you fulfill your mission? But but this became pretty good because what were some of the songs that we we had to perform in public? Uh, let's see. I remember having to stand in front of the Coco Pier on video <laughs> with people out there singing. I'm a little teapot. <laughs> I can't even remember. It was my, my wife took great delight in this. She has a real love for Pat. And she came up with the things that we would have to do, thinking that I would win and Pat would lose. But a lot of times it ended up me having to do these songs. But, it, but the, 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 the beauty of that is that um, most of the men uh, that joined the Man Cave of the School of Manliness, we challenged them, uh, you need to be fit you need, for a lot of reasons. And and you you have gotten tremendously fit since you joined uh, the school of manliness. Yeah, you know, in following uh, your suggestion and uh, following the uh, keto diet, you know, trying to cut out carbs, I've lost all told since my maximum weight, I've lost right around a hundred pounds. Yeah, and, it's dramatic. Uh, just I know that during the year that year that we were doing the uh, competition, I lost an additional twenty pounds. Yeah, it's yeah. So it's it's. But it, it it is it's we're we're challenging each other we're having fun doing it but but the men uh, oh you know what else we're doing is I think once every Saturday morning the men have a check in on our on our, our our we have a non Facebook community on our website that Pat developed well we use a, a software package called Kajabi but but Pat you know did all the the in, installation of that and customizing of it but the men check in on Saturday morning goes you know you know I. I this is what I did. Like I, I, my main focus for my health is how many calories did I burn? I like to burn about thirty six hundred calories a day. I would have, wear a Fitbit watch, and I'll I'll focus on that for my. And but I'll say here's the kind of things I did for fitness, and this is what I did as far as you know my weight. You know, and we try to keep each other maintaining our our health, and and uh, and then we also say and you know I, I what we did as far as service you know, for the family, for, to the Lord, or what we did as far as our spiritual life. One of our men, Michael Gardner, he's been, he's, he's uh, challenging us all to go to daily mass. So it's that weekly check-in all that the men have. So it's pretty cool. But being lean and mean, man, you think of Clint Eastwood, you don't think, you know, there, there was a, there's a statement in one of the Louis L'Amour Westerns, which by the way, I, anyone who loves Louis L'Amour is a, is a friend of mine. I have all of his books right, right here, right at my hand's reach. I can reach and grab one. The Louis L'Amour Westerns, it's a leather-bound book. This one is called Showdown at Yellow Butte by Louis L'Amour, the great Western writer. All of his cowboys were virtuous, flawed perhaps, but virtuous. And the women were always very strong. You never see them lusting after a woman, for example. You, you see them living by the cowboy code. <clears throat> and so in, 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 when you think of uh, Louis L'Amour uh, westerns. You think of the, the westerns like people like Clint Eastwood. You think of these men that were <clears throat> were gritty, that were lean and mean and able to rise to the occasion. And so I've been very privileged because I use a Louis L'Amour quote at the beginning of each chapter, and I got to talk to his widow, his widow Kathleen L'Amour. I ask her permission to do so. So, yeah. So, so what? Are, what are other things? What are some of the other titles you th you think of in the book? That some of the other chapters that that jump out at you. Well, you know, one of the things that jumps out at me is uh, the whole concept on, you know, I, I'm going to uh, start asking you questions. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you wrote it. But uh, why 
why ask the question, where have all the cowboys gone? Why is it important to have cowboys around? Well, you know, the inspiration for that book came from my wife, as everything does in my life. Uh, my beautiful bride, Cindy, what a, what a joy and blessing and what a powerfully and strong woman. We were driving, the, driving our, our car along um, Diamond Head, going along the ocean there. <clears throat> and uh, she said, oh, you got to hear this, this song. She turned up the radio. And there was a song, and I apologize at the moment. I don't remember the artist or the person who wrote it. But the song is, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And the woman is, is bemoaning, you know, where, where is my John Wayne? Where's my happy ending? You know, where, why, don't, why don't you work hard and I'll raise the kids, you know? And when Cindy and I go out, and sp when I go out and speak, and Cindy joins me at many times, half the time she comes with me, um, before we even get two steps from the car, we're basically surrounded by women. And it, of every age, I speak to young college age women and, uh, and, uh, and, and mixed groups of all age. And they, they come up to me and say, you got to tell the men we want them to be men again. They're desperate for men um, to be men. So many of the young men, they, they, they don't know how to ask a girl out on a date. They go and do things in groups. Um, but I, I was speaking to a Theology on Tap group. By the way, I love that group and I love the name of that group. And uh, the women right away said, you got to tell, tell the men here to ask us out. They just kind of hang out with it. There's no, there's no <clears throat> um, uh, boldness on the part of the men. And then if we do date, they never ask us to marry them. And if, we do, if they do ask us to marry them, we never set a date. And, uh, and, and they need men to step up and lead by example, lead through servant leadership, lay down their lives and get committed. And so the whole woke culture is so opposed to the whole concept of manliness. And yet, I mean, Cindy and I are reading, studying the book of Genesis, and yet it says right there, you know, uh, on the sixth day, God created them in his image and likeness, and he made them male and female. There's no gender spectrum. He made them men, and he made them women. And, uh, and you know, he made men out of mud. He made women from their the Adam's ribs, so they're more highly distilled and more beautiful, more wonderful. But men are just this grit and this muck uh, made out of mud to be tough. And men aren't tough anymore, they're pushovers. In Hawaii, we call it taking responsibility. You know, uh, one of the Louis L'Amour quotes I, I use, it's sort of Western too, a lot of the Westerns were based on his books. Um, you, you know, you're, bo you're, born, a, you're born, born a boy, but you gotta grow into, it's when you, basically the essence is when, it's responsibility that makes a boy into a man. In Hawaii, we call that kuleana. In Genesis, it's God saying, "Take stewardship over the earth." You know, you know. He made the. He made. We were studying the other yesterday how God made the 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 earth and the sun to rule the night, and then and the and the day, the day and the night. He made rulers, and one of the things he did is he made he gave Adam the the char, in charge of ruling over the earth, having kuleana, having dominion, and so we need our men to lead. But you don't lead by that old macho garbage you lead by tender by loving and laying down your life and we're talking with pat gervais who's a great example of manliness to me um and he's a member of bear school of manliness uh he's a, helped me develop bear school of manliness and the man cave which you men can join at deepadventure.com and you women there's a place for you there too at the mama bears uh, you have a one-year curriculum there on the virtues and you can get the family membership and get your sons <clears throat> to go through it if you're maybe you're a single mom or get your husbands to to join and be and lead their sons through that curriculum too so go to deepadventure.com and find out more the book we're talking about a 12 rules for manliness where have all the cowboys gone while well, he's right here pat gervais will be right back after this message that probably uses pat's voice because he's the voice of the bear wasnick adventure This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Humility. Lots of folks equate humility with weakness. True, there is false humility, which can be just another name for downright cowardliness or shiftiness. But true humility takes a unique sort of courage, takes self-control. In fact, in the original language of the New Testament, the base word for humility means controlled strength. It goes like this. I have the right and the power to enforce being bright, but I choose to be otherwise. It takes real restraint, especially when emotions get revved up. 
I learned for the most part to tame reacting to my emotions. The hardest for me is to exercise restraint when I see a bully in operation, like giving a waitress ill treatment. Gets my dander up serious bad. Now stop and consider how God did it. The all-powerful, present, everywhere, and all-knowing God chose to come to us in the form of a frail human body that got tired, got hungry, and sweated drops of blood even allow himself to be beaten and pinned to a cross when he could have called legions of angels to his rescue. Had to tell his boys who wanted to call down fire from heaven that fire and destruction were not the way to respond when having a sense of being wronged. The rugged John the Baptist, you know, he was a true warrior, had a warrior spirit. Yet John the Baptist said of Jesus, he must increase and then of himself, I must decrease. Not many of us willing to sacrifice our power and position. It takes a real man to be humble. It takes sacrifice, self-restraint, and courage. In God's economy, humility is hot, and unbridled pride and passion are not. This is Dan Laboon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to deepadventure.com to our web store if you'd like and buy the new, our new, my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Or Amazon, or go to my, our great publisher and all the great people at Sophia. It works so hard for me with my books. Uh, you can also buy that, the book there. You can go to Barnes & Noble. It'll be in a lot of libraries. A lo most of the Catholic bookstores and Christian bookstores will carry it. Uh, but yeah, get, let's get this book. Let's get this book in your hands, hand it out to your friends. Um, buy them as gifts uh young men especially who are going uh, off to college give it to them and women should read this book because it really helps you understand what kind of man you're looking for and don't give up uh one of the things about women uh, in the wild west was it was really the women that made the west because when the men went out there they were just being wild and crazy and the women showed up and made them shape up so we need we need we need you women to uh to get this book into your men's hands. Pat Gervais, a great friend of mine, he's one of the men who, he is, he and I are the ones, basically he, who put together the beautiful software program that we use for Bear School of Manliness, uh, the web app, that we, the, uh, the, the smartphone app, and everything else for uh, the Man Cave of Bear Schools of Manliness. You can find out about that at deepadventure.com. So Pat, what else about the book did, uh, did you want to talk story about? Well, you, you talk about, well, one question I have, is why 12 rules? I know we have the 12 uh, tribes of Israel. Um, you know, when uh, the queen of the earth comes back, she's got 12 stars over her head. There are 12 apostles, but why 12 rules? Well, I was when counting, or 11? well, I was counting on my hands 10, and then I leaned over to start using toes to count, and it was, could hardly reach them. So that's the main reason. It was started out as 20 rules. Actually, my goal is to do 12 more. So this doesn't say the only 12 rules. These are 12 rules for manliness. 
But what it is is it highlights for me, in here I say about, John Wayne says, every man's got to have a, a creed, a code that he can live by. And so that's the focus of the, the, the creed. My, our, you know, our creed in our, in our ministry is the most radical quest a man can pursue is the, to abandon himself to the wild adventure of God's will. That's my creed. Duke Hanamoku had a creed. You know, um, try to, to share aloha with everyone. That means love. That's, that's what I live by. That's my creed. Um, so a creed is like a one or two sentence statement. This is the essence of what I live by. And then the code is like um, uh, the, how you implement that. You know, I think the Marines have se Sempus Fide. How do you say it? Sem Semper, Semper, Semper Fi. Fidelis. Yeah, Semper Fi. <clears throat> but they also have the Marine code. You know, the Boy Scouts have a, have a creed, but they also have a code. As a black belt, the ninja black belt uh, school that I went to, we had a code of what we believe. Like, for example, look for the good in each person while being open to, to discussion, hold to that which you know is true. We had a black belt code that we live by. And so that's what these 12 rules are there. I start out with helping you define your personal creed and then begin to discover the 12 rules you will live by. So... Um, so, the, but there's there's more. <laughs> there's probably uh, you know dozens more. But um, I'm, so there may be a, 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 a book number two for this. But yeah, twelve rules was just like I ran out of time. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I didn't know if there was some some sort of connection to uh, you know the other uh, twelves. Well, some it's people... a natural. It's a natural. Yeah, yeah. The twelve yeah. disciples. Yeah, twelve tribes. So uh, going through the uh, uh, the chapter, the, the number them... the number twelve which is the number of Pat Gervais' IQ, things like that. I thought it was only 11 and a half. <laughs> so uh, some of the other uh, t you know, titles of the chapters you have, because the first chapter is, and you just spoke about it, is uh, Know Your Creed and Live By Your Creed, which I mean, you just explained that to us. But um, that, explain, what's this ride for the brand? I'm not... Uh, oh. I'm not actually riding for a brand. Well, you ride. ride you do. You ride Harleys, don't you, exclusively? Well, I try to, yeah. but uh, right now I'm having physical problems doing that. Yeah. Well, you know what? The thing about the the thing about the creed, first of all, is once you've defined that creed, it makes it life simpler, not easier usually. Well, actually, uh, Catholic Catechism says that living the life of virtue gives you a life of ease. Well, part of that ease is in making quality decisions, and you make decisions quickly because you know what you stand for. Living, uh, living in a way that's not responsible or not disciplined eventually makes your life really hard. You know, it basically puts you in chains, so you're not free at all. But um, the right for the brand is, is, the, f is the, uh, the first real uh, code that I talk about. And what that means is, who do you write for? When I, when I had my cabin in Montana, we built a little, a little hunter's cabin about a mile and a half from Canada on the North Fork of the Flathead River right next to the uh, Glacier Park. Uh, there was no electricity within 40 miles or 30 miles of my home. Um, no running water. You had to run to get it. Beautiful stream, though, next to my cabin. Uh, and, and in, and, but what I found out in Montana is that when you go, go into that area, Wyoming, area, there's always like a, um, at the entrance to the ranches, even a small ranch, there would be two big logs, vertical logs supporting a horizontal log on top. And the name of the ranch, and usually a lot of times the brand is branded right into that wood. Uh, so, so the question is, everyone knows whose land that is, what ranch that is. Do people know who you are? Do people know, uh, or do you hide behind the woke? Are, are people afraid of the woke con cancel culture, or they just don't care? Do they know who you ride for? Do they know that the brand you ride for is Jesus Christ? The early Christians had that ichthys, you know, the someone would draw a half fish in the sand and the other person would counter it if they were Christian or the or the cross itself, the, the, the horizontal. You know, do people know, are you faithful to the brand? Because Cowboy was loyal to the point of death to the brand. He was very careful who he rode for, but once he, once he chose to ride for a brand, the other men there were equally committed and they relied on him. If you don't do your job, that means someone else is going to have to do it. Or it could even mean something dangerous, you know, could happen because something wasn't being done properly. So 
do people who do you ride for do you ride for yourself for your own glory for power for money do you ride do you ride for um maybe your political party or do you ride for jesus christ and so know who you ride for and everything else in your life uh it's a very simple makes decisions very simple oh great now uh the the next chapter really in my opinion doesn't uh, require a lot it's being a man of your word mm. uh, may, maybe it's because of the way i was raised it's that's been instilled in me it's all i've always been one of those that oh if i say i'm going to pick you up at uh, seven o'clock get you to your doctor's appointment i'm going to be there at five minutes to seven to pick you up now we used to say if you're not 10 minutes early you're five you're already late yeah keep your word that's a very that's a wonderful example <clears throat> you know i had a, actually had a, someone in my life once who's pretty well-known surfer and uh champion surfer and he used to lie about he used to lie all the time for no good reason i mean a lot of it was about self aggrandizement but almost like for no reason he got so used to lying he just lied all the time and then i remember he would introduce me and go oh this is bear Wozniak. you can count on him he always tells the truth and why would he make that a point of reference about me um, telling the truth is also, it's also about, sp if you got a problem with someone, you don't talk to everybody in the world about that person. If there's a problem, you go to that person and you do it on a timely basis and you deal with what's going on. You don't, you don't like sweep it under the rug and you tell not just the truth, you tell, tell all the truth that needs to be there in order for things to be clear. And then on the other hand, you don't, you don't talk bad about other people, but, but being a man of your word, I mean, Jesus, when God said, let there be light, the words that were spoken were the, were the, were the logos. It was Jesus himself is the word. John said, in the beginning was the word, and the word is with God, and the word was God, and through, all, through him all things came to be. And who is the liar? Who is the father of lies? Jesus said it was Satan. So who's your father? In every little way, when you speak to your wife, by the way, if you make a promise to a kid and don't keep it, shame on you. Go fix that right now. When you make a, a covenant with your wife to cherish her, live by that word. We need, to be, we need to be men that can be counted on. So one of the codes that I write about is being a man of your word. Your word is your oath. The cowboys were like, when they were selling cattle, they would, they would just uh, shake hands on it. Now, there was often that there was a deed transferring title, but that was so that further down the line when they sold it, they knew that they, they weren't rustlers. But, um, but the contracts and the agreements in those days were all done on a handshake because a man's word was his bond. We're talking with, yeah, yeah. We're talking with Pat Gervais, uh, my good friend. He's the voice of most of the promos on our, on our radio show, and he's the member of uh, Bear School of Manliness and the Man Cave. He helped develop all that. And we'll get right back uh, with Pat Gervais after this break. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure. 
plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Pat Gervais, my good friend, about the, my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Uh, it's pretty much based on Pat Gervais' life. Uh, but you can find it at uh, most bookstores as well as Amazon, Sophia Publishing, and our own website, deepadventure.com. So tell us, tell us more about what you thought about the book or, or thoughts that you have, Pat. Uh, I really liked it. Uh, one, of the th one of the chapters kind of kind of scared me to you know at first based on the title but once you get into it it's one of those oh okay it makes sense and uh do you want to explain why we need to be dangerous oh that a man needs to be dangerous and to make a stand i would like to start that conversation out with talking about being physically dangerous i mean it in different ways also but number one a man needs to be fit and in shape and be ready to go at least two minutes in a fight and, be, and I think because ultimately it's you that stand between physical danger and the vulnerable, especially those that you love. When my wife and I walk down the street together <clears throat> lately, you know, with all that's been going on in the world, we have a technique of she doesn't walk. Uh, she walk, we, she will almost do a dance. She crosses from one side of me to another, depending on how big the if there's a threat walking towards us or someone that looks confused or they're on drugs or something. Um, um, we almost do a dance, uh, but I know uh, that I'm 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 spatially aware. I know where the alpha seat is. She knows where it is now too. She knows where I sit in a restaurant, so that I can observe any danger that might be coming. And it's not like it's a paranoid thing. It's just second nature to us to be like this. But you need to. I think men also need to be trained in um, in how to protect. I think um, most men need to be able to know how to throw a jab, punch, hook, uppercut. Side kick, front snap kick, mule kick, uh, maybe how to grapple, or maybe they need to know uh, how to use weapons. And then men need to men need to think about what am I willing to do in a fight uh, if I'm if 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 someone wants to fight me or, or hurt one of my family members. Are you willing? This is pretty graphic, but are you willing to to put your eyes in someone's eye socket? in order to protect yourself and to protect your family. If they kill you or maim you, they've, they've maimed your family. So when, at what point are you willing to fight back? And at what point will you, what, how far will you go? Each person needs to make their own decision. But then you also can look at that in terms of spiritual warfare. You know, do you get up every morning? Do you pray for a covering of protection, the blood of Jesus over your family? Do you sprinkle, sprinkle your home with holy water? Do you go to battle with the rosary? for the protection of your family and friends. And then the third thing, are you willing to make a stand? I've, it's interesting, I've asked different people to do an endorsement for my book or, 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 or write a review on Amazon, and they'll like it and they'll read it, but they go, well, I really don't like to be out there you know, and have my name you know, out in the culture. They won't stand up for Jesus. They, don't, they won't stand, make a stand and say, here I am, Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna deny you. Will you also deny me? You know. No, it, the Bible says basically this: if you if you deny if you are unfaithful, yea, I am always faithful. But if you deny me, I must deny you, for I cannot deny myself. And so many people, I think, right now, if Jesus was walking along the street carrying the cross, they wouldn't go help him. I mean, his disciples didn't, right? All, all but John um, abandoned him. Would you make a stand with Jesus if you if you won't go on social media? Not that I'm a big fan of social media, but if you won't make a stand. If you won't take the risk to say, I belong to Jesus and I believe in Jesus and do that type of warfare and be that kind of tough and that kind of dangerous, are you, are you denying Christ? It's, you know, it's not that you're saying, I'm denying you, Jesus. Are you just not being there for him? So th there's a lot to that chapter. I go pretty deep into that chapter. Yeah. And bridling your passion, <laughs> yeah, letting good things run wild. I mean, that's, uh, 
you know, if it's a good thing and you let it run wild, you're going to lose it, aren't you? Well, the the, the thing is, is kind of like this: is I'm making a a statement that you know, it was it. Um, <clears throat> G.K. Chesterton, speaking of the virtues, the four cardinal virtues, he called them virtues of restraint. You know, that you, virtue, uh, the virtue of fortitude and justice and self-mastery and prudence. But he said the three theological virtues, you can never love God too much of faith, hope, and love. You never can have too much faith, too much love, too much hope. That's what I mean by good things running wild. What happens with, the, with our passions is people will make it. I, I was once introduced by someone to his wife saying, this is Bear Wozniak. He's the guy I told you about who follows his passions. And I go, no, I don't. First of all, pa you don't follow passions. They push you around, right? You're being driven by them. And I kept saying no, and he said, yes, you are. And I said, no, I, I don't want to follow my passions. What I want to do is be drawn by God's desires, by godly desire, that God would lead me uh, by new and upright desires. The word passion actually means to suffer. The word desire in the very word, in the Latin at least, means to look up to the sky. So I want to have a desire for God and be led by new and right desires for truth, for justice, uh, for, for, for the good of life. Now, when it comes to men, we have this limbic system that wants, uh, you know, has desires, you know, whether it's for a drink or for uh, making love or or whatever um uh and so we what happens with that is this is a good thing making love to a, 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 your wife in the nuptial union is a good thing having a, a shot of whiskey is a good thing but when you when you take like you talked about earlier moderation desiring the creature and the philosophical team, term creature means anything that god's made if you desire that more than your creator that's a problem if you're looking to alcohol for your consolation, if you're a sex addict, if you're a drug addict, if you're looking for anything, if you're looking for power, if you're looking for money, if you're looking for whatever that is more the, that, that you go to for your consolation, it's the first thing you go to in the morning, it's the last thing you think about at night, then, then it's ruling, it's ruling you. But think about your passions like a horse. It's very, very powerful. And, and a desire, for example, to make love to your wife is a very beautiful, to make love is a very beautiful thing. As long as you're bridling that horse and saying, I'm going to ride this horse, I will do this, I will enjoy this, this but, I'm, but, I'm, but it's only going to be this powerful urge that I have will only be within the contents of the nuptial union with my, with my wife. Um, I, I'm going to pursue financial success, but only within the bounds of, 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 of having a balanced life for my family and not using people or, or damaging things. So when you desire the creature more than the, the creator, then it, passion is driving you. But if you bridle that power, those passions are there for a reason and guide them properly, there's nothing more powerful than the image of a horse, you know, and, and, and bridling your passion so that the good things can run wild. Right. And now what's this thing about a drifter? How, how could, yeah, how, I know the High Plains drifter always you know, <laughs> came through and saved the day. Yeah, you know, what's wrong with being a drifter? I think it, there was a scripture verse that I fell in love with when I was 19 years old. It's in the book of Habakkuk. And it says this, <clears throat> write this vision down in words that are big enough so the one that's writing them can run while he is reading. And if the vision tarries, wait for it, for surely it will come. It was a picture of a, a runner. The messengers used to run from city to city and proclaim the message. But for me, it was a word of God has a purpose for my life. He has a vision for my life. One of them that reached me early when I was about 17 in sociology class, social studies class, well, all of the realization suddenly that I could be a father. You know, it was more amazing to me that I could be married, that I could be married. It was that I could actually bring an eternal, an, an ex a person into existence that would live forever. <clears throat> and so that became uh, a purpose, not just a drift, not just passing through life like I think so many do, but to begin through this process of writing your creed and your code, what is it, what is the dreams and the desires? Jesus said, I'll give you, I'll put a new, new and right desires in your heart. I'll take the heart of stone from your body and give you a heart of flesh. What is it? What's the nudge? What are those dreams, those, those, the sense of what God is calling you to in your life as a young person or even in, in, in our age? You know, think about it. Abraham and Moses. They were old dudes when God used them in the most powerful ways. So 
have take time to discern and to pray and i have a process for people to do that to determine what is it that's really what is what is it what's the, what's the call that i have you know uh, to be a father yes as to be a husband it maybe it's to um to start a a, a ministry to teach children how to fish who knows or or work with veterans like you do uh, but there's a calling and sometimes it comes as a little tap on the shoulder from the holy spirit Sometimes it comes as a kind of a push, but be alert to the call of God because God, God says this, I know what I have in store for you, plans for peace, not destruction. See the word plans? A future reserve for you full of hope. If you seek me, I will let you find me. If you seek me with all your might, I'll let you find me. So the whole concept of that chapter is don't be a drifter. Have a purpose. If you don't have a purpose, go through the process of seeking the Lord's will and dream and dream big. Think about don't don't deny anything. It's right, I always say just I have all these volumes and volumes of brown leather books you see me with all the time. That's where I write my dreams. And then sometimes and then I'll go back and I'll discern, is that God's will? And don't be don't be surprised when it is, like doing long ride home or 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 whatever God might be calling you to. But dude, we're out we're out of we're out of time. We're talking with Pat Gervais. Just one of the most special human beings in my life. I love you, Pat. Thanks for being on the show. And uh, if you want to get to know Pat more, why not join Bears Man Cave in the School of Manliness? He's one of the leaders there and helped develop it. And you can do that at deepadventure.com. Until next week, uh, we got to go, Pat. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. My wife always likes aloha. to say, have me make the sign of the cross at the end. So, maka, maka inoa, okamakua, kekeki, yame, keohana hemalele. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and find and find our book, Twelve Rules for Manliness. Where have all, all the cowboys gone? Get them for you and for your friends. Till next week, aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasting Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasting Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.